define the Tesla. So Tesla, it, there's two types of question they can ask. They either ask you to define magnetic flux density, which is B, or they ask you to define the unit, which is a Tesla. And they both have slightly different answers. So Tesla is the unit of B. Don't define B, define the unit. So how we can start with is with usually we use standard one, our B, I, L, sine, theta, and we rearrange for B. So this is I, L, sine, theta. You need to talk about the units of every single quantity in this equation. So force per unit length. Okay, so force, let's go with that, per unit length. Also known as, better to write also the units that you show that you know, because uh, sometimes they do give marks for that. One Newton per meter. So on a wire carrying one amp of current. Okay, or sometimes you don't you want to you want to make it clear that it's divided by current, no? Okay, okay. So we can say divided by or per wire carrying one m of current where next we must talk about the angle where the current or the wire is perpendicular or 90 degrees to the magnetic field. So that's why you make sure you mention force, current, length, length is already there, and angle, 90 degrees. By definition, that's how we define a Tesla. How much is one Tesla? So marks here, first one is force per unit length, that's one. Per unit ampere, look for dividing per ampere divided by, okay, 1M of current, that's one here. Perpendicular or normal to current perpendicular to magnetic field. That's another one. And then Newton per meter. Okay. So in this case, oh, you see the M1, A1 combo, right? You must get the M1. Only you can get the A1. That's generally how they, uh, that's generally how they, they write it like that. So why did they never mention the sign and just specifies 90 degree? Because if we do sign, it doesn't really add extra information. La. I mean, you could say the sine of the angle is 1. Sure, but it's more information to talk about the angle. You don't really care about the value of the sine. But if you do mention the sine, that's okay also. Yeah. All right, let's go on. A horseshoe magnet is placed on a balance. A stiff metal wire is clamped horizontally between the poles. Mm -hmm. Magnetic flux density in the space between the poles is uniform and zero outside the region. So you can kind of imagine you have some magnetic field here. So the length of wire normal to the magnetic field is 6.4. I'm going to assume that it's only this part, 6.4 cm. That's L, inside the magnetic field. Here's where the magic happens. When the wire in the current is switched on, the reading increased by 2.4 grams. Current in the wire is 5.6 amps. So imagine this, if you haven't seen a, a scale, scale reading, it's a... How do I draw a scale? Scale... You know, you go to the lab, you measure like the stuff. So this is the scale. You would usually see a screen here. With some numbers. So maybe at first it was zero zero zero, but after you was on the current through this wire, suddenly increased by two point four. So maybe it becomes two point four grams. Example ah, uh. so it looks like the magnet become heavier, but the mass of the magnet didn't change though. It's still the same magnet. How can it become heavier? Hmm, means something pushed down on the magnet. Like you put the thing on the scale, you take your hand and you legit just push down on the magnet. Then the scale will say, oh, you, you become heavier already. No, no, no. It's just an extra force. So something pushed down on the magnet. 
Hmm, let's write, let's write that down here. Something pushed down. This is the force on magnet. Magnetic force lah, actually. Okay, we need to state and explain though the direction of force on the wire. On the wire. Not on the magnet. So let's go back. We cannot use Fleming's left-hand rule here because they didn't tell us the direction of current and they didn't tell us the direction of magnetic field. This 5.6M is going which direction? Don't know. This uh, magnetic field is point to the left or point to the right? Don't know. Okay, never mind. But we do know this force of magnet downwards. So if the magnet is being pushed down, is being repelled downwards, means the magnet is also pushing the wire upwards. This one is force. Nah, let's draw here. Force on wire. They repel, ma. You bring two magnets close together. I, re I push you, you push me. It's the same force. So here, this amount is equal and opposite direction to the force here. That sounds familiar. That's Newton's third law. So we should also mention Newton's third law. That's how we know the force on wire is upwards. So let's go and write it down here. So the force on wire... Eh. No, 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 no. Maybe let's, let's, let's talk about the force on balance first. Yeah, I cannot rub off already. My computer. Okay. So let's talk about the the the, we, the reading increase ah. So called magnet become heavier. Okay, so we say the reading increases. Why? Because of extra force downwards. So due to an uh sorry, a uh, downwards force best to specify force on magnet it's a magnetic force ah. pushing it down so by newton's third law we talk about name drop newton's third law so by newton's third law there is another force also another force of equal magnitude but upwards direction on this wire. I push you down, you push me up. I slap you, you slap me. <laughs> Action reaction pair. So here the monks kind of come through the flow of thought that firstly you want to find the downwards force on magnet. So I'm looking for downwards force on magnet. Gotta make it as clear as you can. Then, I'm looking for Newton's third law. Equal opposite reaction. If you just say Newton's third law also can. You want to describe equal magnitude opposite direction. Also, I kind of understand that. Based on Newton's third law. And lastly, upwards force on wire. On wire. A lot of people I notice, they just say, Oh, there's a force upwards, there's a force downwards. But I'm like, which force? Force on magnet or force on wire? There's too many forces. You gotta specify. So, best if you say on magnet, on wire, from magnet, from wire. Where is the force? What is the force? Okay, then what we need to do now? Calculate, right? Oh, here we go. Okay. So, calculate the magnitude of magnetic flux density between the poles of the magnet. <sighs> okay, for current balance experiments, there's typically... Only one equation we can really use, which is our force on conductor equation. That will be our... Can I get a blue? Okay, F equals to BIL sine theta. And we are looking at force on wire, right? Okay, let's look at the force on wire. How do we find the F on wire? I think what we can use is the change in mass, our 2.4 grams right here. Suddenly, it becomes heavier by 2.4 grams. Means the force, whatever force, whether it's downwards on the balance or upwards on the wire, is equal to 2.4 grams or related to. 
So I'm going to write a reminder here that force is mass times g. Or in this case, the magnetic force you want to find is the change in the mass reading times g. So here I'm going to write, fill in, change in mass times g, 9.81. That will be B I L. Now sine theta, we don't need to include it because theta is 0. Hey, theta is 90 degrees, sorry. If you look at the magnetic field, the purple color line and the wire, it's 90 degrees, so we don't need to worry about this thing. It's gone. One. Psi 90 is one, right? Okay, let's plug in the values now. So here you will have a 2.4 grams. So I'm going to put 2.4 times 10, negative 3. This will be in kg. And 9.81. Okay, there are other things we got to plug in is B. We need to find. Current, they give it to us as 5.6. Length, also they give to us 6.4 cm. Please remember the cm. Must convert, okay? Pi and 10, negative 2. With this, we should be able to find our B value of 0 0.06569, which you can also write as, well, let's round it off first, 0 0.066 Tesla. Or, some of you may prefer to write in standard form, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 2. Mm. Both also can. Uh. No standard form also can. Got standard form is also okay. So this is a two-mark question. First mark comes from you showing that you know the force on conductor equation. BIL sine theta. Sometimes if there's more marks, they may also give for substitution of correct values. But anyway, if you get the final value correct, 0 0.066, that's your accuracy mark. Now, just now, we sent in a 5.6 amps current, right? Just now it was DC. That's our 5.6. Uh, current was 5.6 amp direct current. Just steady, one direction. But now, a low frequency alternating current is now passed through the wire. The root mean square value of the current is 5.6. Hey, this is 5.6. But now it's RMS. This is current RMS. Describe quantitatively the variation of the reading seen on the balance. Oh, oh, oh my. Okay. One thing to note is when you see there's a gap and then there's lines, means they want you to do some working and also explain your work. They also say here, quantitatively means they want you to show your calculation, how you get your values. Okay, let's think about this RMS and what is happening first. So current alternating means you have something like this. RMS 5.6 means somewhere here, this value is 5.6 amps. Now, if I were to draw the mass reading, the change in mass reading, okay, let me just draw it. Ah, the color is being moody today. Let's give it a nice sinusoidal also here in time. So if you have current that is oscillating, means your reading will also be oscillating positive, negative, positive, negative. And just now our mass reading was what? 2.4 grams, right? If you have 5.6, means you have a 2.4 gram reading for DC. But now you are oscillating. So you have a highest point and the lowest point. Highest current, lowest current. Highest mass reading, lowest mass reading. We need to find what that is. So this will be our lowest, highest. Highest, lowest. They ask for variation means from this highest to the lowest. What is the variation? That's what they're asking. So I'm going to show you the shortcut and I'm going to show you the long, long cut also. The shortcut is first step, we try to find what is the peak current based on the RMS. So the equation is I RMS is I peak over root 2. I peak is the highest point. Now. So we have. I peak 
Okay, I'll just write here as peak la. Equals to 5.6 root 2. Actually, this is a long method la. Okay, never mind. I'll show you the long method first. 5.6 root 2. And that will give us... Uh, what's our reading? Uh, 7.9 amps. So our peak is going to be 7.9 up there. Then the next step is you calculate for 7.9, what is your force? So the maximum force, let's try this. BIL sine theta, right? You just redo the thing again. So B, what's the B again? 0 0.066 Tesla times 7.9 times 6.4 times 10, negative 2. Okay, this will give us roughly 0 0.033 newtons. Of course, one more step is if you take F equals to mg, you're going to find the mass, right? Reading is in mass. So then, you will get that mass here, you divide by 9.81, mass will be 3.4 times 10 to the negative 3 kg. Also known as 3.4 grams. Oh, finally, you find the answer. So that means up here will be 3.4 positive, and the other extreme will be 3.4 in the negative. So this is the, the, the calculation. No? You find maximum current, peak current. You find maximum reading, then you know, oh, times 2, positive, negative, positive, negative. So the conclusion that you can write here is. Total variation, right? Mm, can show you're working. Uh. So we say uh, the reading fluctuates or changes or varies between 3.4 grams and negative 3.4 grams. Or you could say the total variation is double of 3.4 so 6.8 grams from the highest all the way to the lowest this is a long method like you legit show the equation is there a shortcut i like shortcuts make life a little bit easier yes so you know this rms equation right rms it doesn't have to be just for current or voltage you can use rms for mass also because you see rms is a sinusoidal thing you see a sine cosine you want to find average RMS is your good friend. So, the shortcut. Shortcut. You want to find the 3.4 mass? Okay. Let's do... Hmm, mass RMS equals to mass peak over root 2. Oh, can like that one? Ah? Can. Why not? So, we want to find the new peak. We just take the old mass, which was 2.4 grams times root 2. What's the answer? This one is a sh hex 3.39 or 3.4. Done. That's it. The end is all you need to show. So the new maximum reading you get just based on RMS is 3.4 and which is the highest point and lowest point. So which method you like? I would suggest you to know how to use both. Like doing the full FBIL sine theta over there, but also knowing the shortcut that you can use for anything with the RMS or sorry, anything with the sinusoidal pattern. You can do that too. Okay, so I think that is all for this question. It's a good one to revise for current balance experiment. Hope that was helpful in helping understand a little bit more. I'll see you in the next question.